PowerPoint slideshow on fiscal policy. We're going to explain what fiscal policy is and how it can potentially help the macro economy. One of the things you would have noticed back in unit two is the fact that both fiscal and monetary policy are designed to influence total spending, which means they're designed to affect the aggregate demand curve. So we're going to go ahead and kind of talk through some of this here. By the way, that so-called tax package that passed back in the fall, and that's going to be effective this year, that is an example of fiscal policy. And you're going to probably recognize some elements of it as you go through this. So let's go ahead and share the screen and let's kind of get this stuff going here. So we're going to be talking about fiscal policy, first of all, and then once we're done with fiscal policy, we're going to talk monetary policy later on. First of all, there are two types of macro policy, and fiscal policy is the purview of the president and Congress. Monetary policy, which we talked about later, is the purview of a nation's central bank. That would be the Federal Reserve of the United States. Uh, they are done in very different fashions. They have different strengths and weaknesses. But what they have in common is they are both designed to influence the macro economy through, what's our theme? Total spending, through changing total spending and shifting aggregate demand. Remember that Keynes versus Hayek video we saw? My advice is real simple, boost aggregate demand. This is where fiscal policy is going to come into play. Now, fiscal policy refers to actions that are conducted by the president and Congress in order to change total spending and improve the economy. It consists of both built-in stabilizers and discretionary tools. Built-in stabilizers are legal limits and automatic policies like Grand Rudman that are supposed to kick in under certain circumstances, but they usually tend to not work because sometimes if it's not going to be something we can deal with right now, if it's going to cause other problems, we'll just work around it. We'll vote for an emergency spending measure or this and that and the other uh, and so forth. And my response is if you're going to have a rule and not follow it, why have the rule at all? The discretionary tools are the activist form of fiscal policy. These are specific actions used by the president and Congress together in order to either solve a current economic problem or set up long-term stability. Let me be clear, proactive fiscal policy, long-term stability doesn't work because once one president or one is out of office, the next president changes things up. Usually every couple of years is a turnover as who's in power in Congress and they tend to block what was being done before. Bottom line is most fiscal policy we see is reactive, which means there's a problem, we need to fix it, and this is what we're gonna to do to fix it right now. And the tools that are used are changing government spending, changing income taxes, and job buying. Now, the strong tools are changing government spending and changing income tax rates, and please notice income is big and bold. Income taxes, personal income taxes affect consumer spending. Business income taxes affect gross private domestic investment spending. Only income taxes can really affect total spending. Production taxes shift the AS curve. That's excise and sales taxes and some tariffs. Those are not fiscal policy. And the United States doesn't engage in activist aggregate supply side policy. So if it's taxes for fiscal policy we're changing, it is only income taxes. Now. Changing government spending on projects like road construction, purchases like equipment for the armed forces, some of the social programs like public assistance or research grants, the government can have a direct uh, impact on total spending, aggregate demand, and hopefully price levels, real GDP, and our unemployment. Changing income tax rates on private citizens will affect consumer spending. If, for example, the recent tax package involved cuts in both personal and corporate income tax, Reducing personal income taxes would mean people get to keep more of their paycheck, which hopefully they would spend. Reducing corporate income tax would mean that hopefully businesses are going to be spending more of their profits because less is going to the government, which in turn would lead to a boost to aggregate demand. Some of y'all have probably noticed a number of businesses indicated they were going to start paying their workers more money. Some businesses were going to start, you know, investing in more factories and developing more types of uh, equipment and so forth after the announcement of the tax cuts. And so we're seeing some response, whether it's really going to kick in or not, is we have yet to see, but there's some intent involved. And that was kind of the idea behind it. Love or hate the president, regardless of how you feel, the president and Congress basically did something and there was at least some initial reaction, but only time will tell as far as how effective it was. Key thing about changing income taxes and government spending. They require an act of Congress. You have to pass a bill and make it a law. Both houses of Congress and the president has to sign it or at least not veto it. But these are the strong tools. But one of the problems, it takes a while to pass federal law. It really does. 
Now, jawboning is a weak tool. This is where the president feels that Congress maybe isn't responding or Congress doesn't want to do anything or Congress is opposing him or her. The president instead may get on TV and start making speeches or get on Twitter and post tweets. We've seen how effective that is. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but you could have ranking members of the cabinet. You could even have members of Congress who are trying to accomplish something. But they'll use the media, social media, television, radio, etc. And they're going to try to persuade people persuade businesses, persuade foreign trading partners to do certain things that might lead to changes in spending, but they don't require federal legislation. This tool has been effective at times. Franklin Delano Roosevelt did the fireside chats. Ronald Reagan made very good use of the television media, but there's other times it's been used very poorly. Jimmy Carter couldn't say the word nuclear. He said nuclear. Okay, and George H.W. Bush bought socks when Christmas to try to encourage people to spend more money, and that didn't work either. The whole thing is someone's media savvy behavior, somebody who's very media savvy could actually be very persuasive and have an impact on spending. Somebody who is not media savvy or whose media behavior is questionable may have the opposite effect. Let that sink in. But this tool is considered a weak one. Changing government spending and income taxes are the strong one. Now, there are two modes of fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy is used in an attempt to lessen the negative impact of a recession. Remember those two scenarios we talked about in the last two videos? That second scenario, where we had evidence the economy was not going to self-regulate, would require expansionary fiscal policy to respond to it. The government would try to use the tools to increase total spending, shift the AD curve to the right, increase real GDP and reduced unemployment. If we have a recession, this is what we want to accomplish here. So through acts of Congress, the government can increase its own spending, reduce personal and business income taxes. Officials can persuade an increase in spending. But it's typically going to be a mixture of these items that will get through because different political philosophies favor different approaches to how to increase spending. But if it's effective, if it gets there in time, we could see a result that's desirable. Now, the first scenario we had was a bad case of demand pull inflation. If we had a situation like that first scenario where there's no evidence of self-regulation, everything we see shows spending will keep rising and inflation will get worse, we want to use contractionary fiscal policy to provide the relief from inflation. Here, the President and Congress would use these tools to decrease total spending, shift aggregate demand to the left in order to decrease the consumer price index and reduce inflation. And so the government could cut its own spending, try not to laugh too hard. Yes, it should. Uh, the government could increase income taxes, good luck getting reelected, but it's the right response. Or officials can discourage spending, try to encourage people to save more and spend less. If the president and Congress were to do these things, and neither of the two major parties seems to be in favor of this, I might add, the libertarians are the only ones I've seen that have been in favor of doing this when necessary. But if they were to do this here, this could actually fight inflation, but there's going to be some political fallout. Keep that in mind. But right now, it's just theory. This is what they would need to do. So this graph here should look familiar. This was the previous 18 months of the second scenario where the economy went into recession. Total spending decreased. The AD curve shifted to the left. CPI decreased and bottomed out. Real GDP was far away from potential and decreased and got even further away. We saw no evidence of self-regulation in our second video. We went to the second version of this here. And so the idea here is, okay, the ball is now on the field, okay? It's been kicked. Congress is now basically trying to move the ball down the field, and they're trying to get spending to increase. They're trying to get bills passed the Senate and the House in a single form that the president could sign off on to cut income taxes and increase spending. This could take a little while. But by the time it does have an impact, though, if the recession still hasn't recovered on its own, as spending begins to increase, as the tax cuts start to translate to people keeping more of their paychecks, the AD curve will begin to move to the right. As businesses start to keep more of their own profits, those who are profitable, and they start reinvesting it in hiring people or building new equipment or whatnot, the AD curve starts to move to the right. As people who are working have less income taxes, or as the government puts more money into programs that are helping get people back to work like road construction, as they start spending those paychecks, the AD curve starts moving to the right. It could take over a year for this kind of movement you see here to happen, but, but if it does happen within a reasonable amount of time, 
As spending does continue to increase, it begins to accelerate more and more like a boulder rolling down a hill. And then real GDP increases and we should see a decrease in unemployment. Again, this is theory. And this is assuming the economy doesn't self-regulate or Congress doesn't have such gridlock that it doesn't get passed. Assuming everything works in the most ideal fashion. Real life is never that way. Now, contractionary fiscal policy is different. This is used to deal with, with inflation here. All right, I need to fix this thing here. I just realized, wow, that is the wrong slideshow. Experiencing severe demand full inflation. All right, da -da -da -da. fix it. The ADA S graph on the left is showing the AD curve shift to the right when total spending was increasing. CPI increasing a lot, real GDP increasing and maxing out. This was the first scenario we saw. Assuming the leading indicator showed no signs of self-correction, the government can start reducing spending on roads and education and increasing those income taxes so that people start crying and cursing and protesting and occupying. But if we have severe inflation, this is something that could be done to get spending to drop. And as spending starts dropping, excuse me, the AD curve starts shifting to the left. As the AD curve shifts more and more to the left, the CPI drops and the rates of inflation get lower and lower and lower. And so if this stuff goes as expected, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see spending and CPI drop, which means inflation will be corrected. I have to emphasize that what you've seen here about fiscal policy is theoretical. I hope you noticed several of my little comments about the fact that it may not work the way it's expected and there's possible failures. That's a topic for later on in this unit. Um, we'll be talking about what the Federal Reserve and monetary policy is in the next couple of videos. So hang in there. Uh, we'll be talking about some of this stuff again in a few minutes.